You're listening to The Three Pillars of Success, a podcast that inspires people of all walks of life to gain perspective on what it means to succeed. My name is Geraldine Convento, and I'm best known for entrepreneurship, my skills in web presence, and SEO. Thanks for listening. Enjoy the show. Hey y'all, how you doing? This is the Three Pillars of Success podcast. Thanks so much for joining me this week. I'm super excited to have a good friend of mine on the show. Her name is Bliss. Welcome. Okay, great. Thank you. It's really good to be on the show. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Cool. So we're going to go ahead and get started. As you know, we are going to be talking about you and your thoughts about success. But before we go into that... Mm -hmm. Let the audience know who you are, where you're from, and what you do. Okay, great. Uh, so I go by the name Bliss. My name is Ananda Kimboya. Nickname is Bliss, which is what people know me by. And I am a well-being coach. I was born and raised in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, and for the past 20 years, uh, I've grown and flourished here in Oakland, California. Awesome. So what do you do for fun? Oh, wow. That's a good question. Uh, One of my favorite pastimes is uh, karaoke. I love to do karaoke. And uh, I'm also a drummer, so I do a lot of drumming. And uh, I also just love connecting with people and talking about different social issues or different personal concerns that they may have. Uh, That's actually part of my fun and enjoyment that I love to do. Awesome. So (laughs) let's start off with what success means to you. You know, quite simply for me, uh, I define success as uh, authentically living my life's purpose and leaving a positive imprint on the world that empowers others to do the same and more. My three pillars of success are clear intention, focused activity, and experiencing joy in the journey. Thinking about clear intention, one of the things um, that I know that has been true for me and a lot of the clients that I've worked with is getting really clear about the intention of what it is that we want to create. And so it usually starts for me with muting those other voices. Um, There's a lot of voices, especially now that we're in this computer age where there's a lot lot of uh, social media that's out there. And then there's also the societal norms wherever you grew up, whatever is uh, commonplace for that society, your generation, whatever that is. There's the family influences and the social economic influences. And sometimes those can become so large or so big that you can't even hear your own voice. So you have to learn how to mute down those other voices so you can get to your authentic voice. And one of the ways that you'll know that you've gotten to your deepest desire, it's kind of like a feeling that you'll have on the inside. There's something that happens when you finally get those voices quieted enough to where you can hear your authentic voice then something happens when you start to think about your, you know, what you really want, that clear intention for yourself. And it begins to resonate with you. And so you may just have like this, this deep knowing of, oh, yeah, that's it right there. Or it could be this powerful surge of excitement that happens. And yeah, that's exactly what it is. But there is something inside of you that you'll be able to tap into to where you really begin to understand and know what is really yours versus what is some other construct from some other place. So that would be uh, getting really, really clear on your intentions, the first one. The second thing for me would be focused activity. Because now that you have this clear intention of what it is that you want, what you want to move towards, then how do you get there? How do you move towards your success? Well, you make a plan. And in that plan, it's really important to identify the who, the what, and the when. Now, the who is, you know, who's going to help me, who inspires me, uh, who's a good coach for me, who's a good mentor for me, uh, who's a good role model. Now, this is typically not your buddy because your buddies are usually in a similar place that you're in. And you're all wanting to move your things forward. The buddies have their place, but not necessarily in this particular step of the who. So when you think about mentors, you think about someone who's already gotten there or who is at least further down that particular pathway than you are that can kind of help to pull you up. And this can also be someone who may not even be here in physical form anymore. Maybe they lived a long time ago, but you're able to study their life and 
get some information and encouragement from there. Those are fine, but I think it's also a good idea to have some people who are actually here so that you can ask questions and get some mentorship or get some coaching uh, to kind of help you to kind of move forward in that direction. The the what is the step. What what am I going to work on right now? What part of my success journey is this? You know, figuring out what is this part that I'm working on. And the when is like, uh, when am I starting? Uh, what's going to be the timeline here? Do I have a timeline? Uh, do I want benchmarks? Uh, or am I just going to check in at the final completion date? So there needs to be some kind of when, you know, when is this going to be completed that's going on in the back of your mind? Because that's the way that you kind of are able to check and see what kind of progress have I made. And then when you think about uh, how do I keep my focus on this activity? Because sometimes you can get off track. So if you get off track, I think it's a question, even before you get off track, I think it's a good idea to uh, create a reminder, you know, of what it is that you want to have happen in the outcome. What is my outcome? So how can I have a reminder of that? And this can be like a song. It can be a journal entry. It can be an affirmation, mantra, pictures, something like that. Or it can even be the definition itself of success for you. That can also be the thing that you keep in front of you to remind you if you seem to, to get off track. And it's, sometimes that can happen, especially if you really spend a lot of time breaking down all of the pieces. When you get to be experiencing the joy of the journey, this is like my favorite part. It's something that I, I don't hear a lot of people talking about, but I think it's important to celebrate your wins. Another part of experiencing the joy in the journey is to have an attitude of gratitude. Now, it sounds like it's a really easy thing to do, and in some moments it is. Like, for example, when you really get clear on your intention, you're like, aha, I know what it is, you know? And that that is the moment when you want to actually start that journal and start <laughs> writing down the things that you're really appreciating and thankful for, or grateful for, whatever language works for you, because that really helps to cultivate this attitude of positivity. And that's what you'll need in those moments when things are not going the way that you want them to go. Uh, life is uh, full of ebb and flow, so it's not always going to be up and it's not always going to be down. It's just a mixture of those things, and all those things weave together gives you the life that you're living. So it's good to be prepared and, and planned ahead of time. And uh, I think it's important to have like a really positive attitude because if your attitude is positive, then that determines your altitude. How high can I go? You're not going to go really high with a, a less than, than positive attitude. Because what's going to keep you short up in those moments when you're not feeling good? So this is one way to do that. Another thing that I like to do in terms of really finding joy in the journey and experiencing that joy um, is to keep a list of what I've accomplished in the course of a day. And I'm not talking about like the, the tactical things, you know, like the how many contacts did I make today of potential customers and how many people did I reach today using this tool or that tool. That's kind of covered in the, the focus activity or it can be covered in the focus activity. Um, what I'm talking about is more the inward journey, like what were my aha moments today? What inspired me today? What did I learn or what did I unlearn today? So those are the things that I think will be very, very key in terms of really reaching your success. And it's important to really understand that uh, the components of that focus activity, those components are the steps that become the journey of your success. Wow, that was a lot. I have so much to say <laughs> in response to everything that you said. I was doing my best to take notes. Uh, the first thing I'll say is mm -hmm. that when you spoke of having clear intention and the importance of finding your own voice, you know, I was never someone who would talk to myself. You know how people mm -hmm. will say, oh, I talk to myself all the time, or if you hear me talking, I'm, that's just me talking to myself, or I was having a conversation with myself the other day. I was always someone who wouldn't really listen to myself because I didn't understand that what my inner voice sounded like. So it wasn't until mm -hmm. this year that I realized 
my inner voice sounds just like me. I was expecting exactly. the voice to be, you know, very godly or sound different. And so I just assume my entire life that I didn't really have an inner voice aside from what I feel in my gut. And then I started to realize how much I would ignore certain things that I would say to myself, like, no, don't park over there. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. well, no, I'm going to park over here. Like, oh, I don't think it's, I don't think you should go on the second or third floor. Well, let's just go ahead and see. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought I was just kind of telling myself something Mm -hmm. that it wasn't really a voice of wisdom. And Mm -hmm. when I started listening, I was like, oh, that's what you sound like. (laughs) (laughs) exactly yeah I and I guess it's different for everybody because I've talked to other people Mm -hmm. you know someone was telling me oh well the problem is I hear so many voices I'm like really I'm like oh okay you know I guess it's different for everybody but for you Mm -hmm. particularly how have you always been in tune with your inner voice and if not when did you discover it what I realized is that the sound of my voice is God's voice. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. That's so deep. So for, well, thank you. It, it, it's, it's, uh, it's very interesting to me because I did not appreciate or respect that voice. And this is where some of the societal things and family structure things come into play, at least for me. Um, I was a little sister, um, and I didn't feel like I had a lot of value within my family structure. So if I'm hearing my voice, then I just automatically minimize it. It's like, mm, don't listen to that voice, you know. And so I had developed this whole idea that anything that sounded like me or looked like me had no value. And I think a lot of people go through that. And I think that's why it's very, very important to push down the family ideas of who you are and the social economic family structure that you grew up in or neighborhood that you grew up in, even if you grew up very wealthy, because that can also be, uh, that can be a hindrance to your own self-development because you may feel like you don't need to develop or you may feel like you're not worthy to have a thought that's separate from this construct that you're already living in. Wow, that's really cool. Thank you so much for all of the wonderful advice and information that you shared with all of us today. Really looking forward to air this show. And yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. You know, it's so important for everyone to define what success is for them. And it's really the purpose Mm -hmm. of the show. You know, there might be people who have not, have never even thought about this. And I want to make sure that people can hear the views of others so that way they can develop their Mm -hmm. own as well. It's exciting stuff. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Well, that was today's episode of the Three Pillars of Success. Remember to follow Bliss on all of her links, which will be down in the description. And have a great day, everybody. Thanks.